And so just a quick kind of layout of this morning, I'm going to give you an introduction into this ministry called Ready Now Recovery. And then after that, I'm going to invite Ponzi's going to come up here and he's going to, I've asked him to speak about the heartbeat of why, why we want to do this ministry. So I'm going to tell you about it. He's going to tell you why we want to do it. And then Rick is going to give a little brief, some information about if you want to serve in this ministry, what that looks like, how you do that. And then after that, we're, we are going to do a little mock group so that you can see how one of these groups is ran and what it would be like if you attended one. So we're going to do that. And then, and then of course, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper at the end of our service. And so thinking about this ministry, uh, before I get specifically into Ready Now Recovery, I want to begin by reading a passage of Scripture. It's from the Gospels that I feel captures the essence of this ministry at its core. So I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 20, by way of introduction to this. <clears throat> it's a well-known passage of Scripture, Luke 4, 14. And this was... This happens directly after the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness and then his return. It says, then we know from reading earlier that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit of God to be tempted of the devil. And after that, verse 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding region and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And so he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. At, as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. Let me pause right there. Part of their regular worship is they would have people, they would read, I believe it was like five, they would have five readings. They would read from, from the law, from the prophets, from wisdom scriptures. And so Jesus, this was just a regular, he was like part of the regular worship service that they would on the Sabbath. And so they, they, they hand, verse 17, you know, Jesus, he stood up to, re to read. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And so Jesus, when he came, this is a direct fulfillment about the ministry of the Messiah when he came, what he would do. And so Jesus said, I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit as the son of God. God, he's anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted preach deliverance to the captives, help those who can't see to see, and those who are oppressed to give them liberty. Thinking about this ministry that we're going to be talking about, Ready Now Recovery, that's what it's all about. It's, as you'll see as I present it, it's Christ-centered uh, recovery program. And it's more, when we think of recovery, got it? Okay, cool. When we think of recovery, you could think of it in, in terms of, say, alcohol or substance abuse, drug, drug addiction only. But this is what this ministry is about is a, a lot more. It's all encompassing. And what it talks about is helping those um, break free from life controlling issues. So there's life controlling issues that that are beyond just drugs, alcohol, 
could be in your relationships, your habits, things like that. And that's what we're, we're excited about. Do you know any people who are brokenhearted through what they're held captive by, what they've yielded themselves to, the shape that they've got themselves into? Like I said, whether it's drugs, alcohol, uh, choices, you know, relationships, sexual sin, whatever. The, how many people are brokenhearted? How many people need the gospel preached to them? How many people need to be, are captive and need to be set free from the things that are holding them bound? You know any people who are bound by their, their sin, their life choices, where life has led them? Do they need to be delivered? <clears throat> Do they need to see clearly? They can't see any hope, but in Christ we know there's infinite hope and forgiveness. And this ministry is about setting at liberty those who are oppressed. It's about freedom in Christ. And we know that the word says that whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. And so we believe that as ministers of Christ, as Christians, we have the opportunity to continue what Jesus started when he came as the Messiah. If we follow in his, you know, his example, offering hope to the hopeless, binding up the brokenhearted, isn't that to be like our Savior? Showing compassion, offering hope, pointing them to Jesus, saying, hey, here's a key. You can let yourself out of this prison through Christ. And so I think it's a great passage. Keep that one in your mind. Luke chapter 4 uh, about this ministry. And so let me pull up our, I'm going to go through a, a PowerPoint presentation. As you can see, Ready Now Recovery. Let me begin with, um, oh, let me back up one here. Okay, so the international directors or I should say national, but it is international because it is in Canada too. So it's, it's in the US and Canada. But the, the, the national directors are a couple named Jimmy and Yvonne Oaks. And Ready Now Recovery is a ministry of adult and teen challenge. How many in the room have heard of teen challenge? Okay, so that's a name that we're familiar with. And because of the, the name, Teen Challenge could kind of throw people off. Now it's Adult and Teen Challenge, so it's ATC. So people understand this is not just for youth, this is for, for youth and, and adults. So since 19, 1958, Adult and Teen Challenge has been a residential only program, and they realized there was a growing need to expand and reach beyond residential. And so that's where they created Ready Now Recovery. It's, they wanted to develop a community support group ministry. And so it's a community facing resource and support network. And they say community facing because there's a realization that there's a person has multiple needs and they'll, they'll, it'll be covered in here, but it's spiritual, it's physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's social. At least five spheres that are comprehensive. And so this touches on the spiritual, but it doesn't neglect the practical needs. Basically, someone needs to develop a full program to get where they need to go. It's not just one, one avenue, but there's... We, have, we live in all these spheres at the same, don't, do we not? We live in a physical body, but we're spiritual. We have emotions. We live in a social context. There's a financial realm we live in. So that's, it's community facing, realizing that there's other nonprofits and community groups that work together along with the church to help people. And so let me go to the next. Go ahead and go to the next slide. There we go. The verse there, Luke 14, 17. Come, because everything is ready now. Go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled. And so Ready Now Recovery is founded on this verse. 
Many of you know this parable that Jesus is sharing. A man prepares a big feast for his guests. He tells his servants to go out and tell them, hey, everything's ready. The feast is ready. As the servant went out, the people had many excuses to why they couldn't attend. We know that those who struggle with life controlling issues can find many excuses to not engage in recovery. The servant comes back and tells the master what he's heard. Then the master says, go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled. One of the core components of Ready Now Recovery is outreach. We are ready for those who come and we are ready to go out and compel those who are not ready to come in. Next slide. Purpose statement. Every person engaged, every community equipped to facilitate transformation through Jesus Christ. As a Christian, as a church, we feel good about this recovery program, knowing that we, we believe and this program believes that ultimate transformation comes through Jesus Christ. He is the solution. He's given us helps and tools and people, but we know that that's where real transformation comes through, Jesus Christ. And in this purpose statement, every person engaged, every community equipped to facilitate transformation through Jesus Christ, those who put this together, they said, we were intentional with the word engaged because we want participate, participants to be actively engaged in their recovery. They are doing the work. We are providing the resource. Every community equipped with the vast training and resources within the ATC network. We believe in transformation and that our identity is in Christ Jesus. No labeling. And so unlike some other programs you might be familiar with, hey, I'm Jesse and I'm an alcoholic and blah, blah, blah. We don't teach, we don't promote that. We don't say that's our identity. We say that our identity is a new creation in Christ. That is what the Bible says. Some people have received Christ and they are a new creation. Some people are waiting and we're encouraging them. Become a new creation. That's your identity. Your identity is not your sin or the thing that has held you captive. You don't need to wear, to wear that label. And so, great purpose statement. Let's go to the, the vision statement. Every person impacted by life-controlling issues will have access to recovery through who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And so, they said, we were intentional about the statement, every person impacted, because we know that family and friends also need to be encouraged, engaged, and equipped. So we provide groups for them also. Typically, our first contact is from a family member. So usually the person entering a recovery program typically is not the person who needs the help. It's their family member saying, I need you to help my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter, my mom, my dad, my aunt, whoever, my cousin. Can you please, what, how do we get them help? But I like this as comprehensive. It's not singly focused just on the person who needs to break free from the life controlling issues. There's an understanding that this person lives in the context of a family and a community. And I don't have to tell you sitting in the room, if you're not the person who maybe has whatever the issue is, but you're related to that person, have you been impacted by their, their life controlling issue? Have you been impacted emotionally, financially, socially, on and on? I was just talking to someone and they were, we were talking about a family member would say, they're going to have a, a family event. Okay, but who's coming? Is so-and-so coming? If they're coming, I'm not coming. 
right? We don't live in a vacuum. We live in a context. And so I really appreciate that there's the recognition and there's the help for, for others. Next. Why ready now? So accountability, innovation, outreach. Accountability is for the facilitator. And and how that happens is there's an application, a background check. You got to have two facilitators per group to have an in-group or in-person group. Annual required training. So you have to continue to do training to keep your certificate surveys for facilitation and group effectiveness. So they want a report. And so they'll even ask the group members to fill out, how's your group going? Are you getting anything out of it? How's your facilitator doing? So there's accountability for you know, the facilitator, for the participants by providing an action plan. So when they show up, they, they start to say, this is my action plan. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I need to do. And we work with them to help create an action plan and through peer-to-peer interaction. So within the group, they encourage crosstalk that they can help one another and talk to one another, what makes suggestions, or hey, this is what's helped me. Uh, Innovative, by having, just so you know, they have virtual groups as well as in-person groups. Three different curriculum sources, so adult and teen challenge curriculum, select living free curriculum and then select right now media so right now media is like a big old huge online uh, library with all kinds of resources they say we intentionally chose right now media curriculum because there are maybe individuals who struggle with literacy right now media is a video based curriculum it allows the participant to engage without shame or guilt So they're trying to include everyone. If you're literate, fine. If you're not, don't let that be a barrier. There's this uh, video training and then outreach. It's core to this ministry because we want to be intentional about going into all the world and compelling them to come in. And so we'll discuss about how they, they create this intentionality of outreach in a moment. Next slide. Okay, the 90-40 situation. When we began to develop Ready Now Recovery and research the barriers that people with life controlling issues have, they discovered this 90-40 situation. 90% of the individuals cannot or will not enter a residential program. It could be for legitimate, legitimate reasons like a single parent, who can't leave their children or they have you know a job they can't commit to a long-term residential program right it would they would lose their job makes sense so the number one barrier was that um, 40% were not ready to seek treatment this was eye-opening for us we've all heard and maybe even said ourselves well if they're not ready then there's nothing we can do Right, and that's why we feel, well, until they're ready, there's nothing we can do. But as believers, we couldn't be satisfied with that statement. Going back to our verse in Luke, compel them to come in. Then in Mark 16, Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. And so that's why outreach is core to ready now recovery. Next slide. There, this is some statistics here. I'll read it for you. In December 2022, um, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Agency announced that 46.3 million people in the U.S. are struggling with diagnosed addictions. And that's up, up from 41.1 million in 2020 and so the number is just going up it's gone up six million people in two years support groups were the primary provider of treatment for those surveyed so the self-help group was uh, two million people 
you know, help 2 million people. The virtual services, 1.9 million. Outpatient rehabilitation, 1.8 million. Outpatient mental health center, 1.5 million. Inpatient rehabilitation, 1.3. And it goes down, it goes down. Prisoner jail, 354,000. That's not gonna be this person's primary solution. But it just shows, it's just this, this statistic alone is showing why we believe that this is so important to have a group like this and to have many groups like this that we can refer people to. We have to make recovery options more accessible. And so by the way, there's recent survey, 334 million people in the US, 46 million of those are struggling with diagnosed addictions. And then how many people haven't reported? So we know the numbers, right? Because that's just the people, that's the numbers that they have. How many people are just not seeking help? They don't get into the category. So I would say the figure is a lot higher. Easily one in 10. This number is 7%, but I would say it's easy, easily higher than that. Okay, so next, next slide. <clears throat> the solution, accessibility. Establish weekly community support groups, both in person and virtually. Initiate. Outreach by partnering with other nonprofits to serve, build relationships, love, encourage, educate, and invite to groups. So r and r is committed to accessibility, establishing weekly community support groups, both in person and virtually and then initiating outreach by partnering with other nonprofits, churches, adult and teen challenge centers uh, to build relationships, love, encourage, educate, invite to groups. And so that's another exciting aspect is this, is us interfacing with the other nonprofit groups in our community. Being, we're probably aware of them, they, they need to get to know who we are that we exist. They've been on the map for a while doing what they do, but also knowing that's part of it is when the people who come into your group as a facilitator, part of your job is to assess them and see where they exceed your ability to help them. Are you gonna take that person in and let them live in your home? No. Well, maybe they're homeless, they need a homeless shelter, or they need food, or they need counseling, or they need psychiatric care, or whatever it is. So that's part of when you build your plan you exceed, you know, you're exceeding what I can provide for you in this group in these categories. And so I'm recommending as your action plan, get yourself stable, you know, get food, get counseling, get medication. And part of that is plug into a church. Are you part of a church where you have pastoral counseling? So accessibility. Next slide. How long will it take? What if I fail? When will I be free? All these questions are part of the transformation process through a Christ-centered perspective, a loving community, and relevant resources. Our groups will guide you through the process of transformation, accessibility, location, relevance, safety, and resources are essential to transformation. So we're committed to providing diverse curriculum for affordability and relevance. We offer safe spaces with both in-person and virtual groups. We have resources for referral to professional care and residential programs. And so the, the core values, uh, let me see here, transformation through Jesus, accessibility for the safe locations, referring to the pastoral counseling, professional counseling, outpatient, residential programs. All right, let's go to the next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, outreach. And then community is vital for all of us. We want to equip communities to have healthy community and safe spaces for individuals to access recovery. Let's go to the next one, participant-centered program. So, Ready Now Recovery, it's a participant-centered program. 
meaning there's no set length of time that an individual is committed to attend. They're able to view the groups available, choose which one meets their needs. Typically what happens is that such community is created in these groups that they want to continue on with another group. So these groups are like, say, anywhere from four week, six week, eight week, and then that one's done. And then we'll say, hey, the next one we're going to do is on this, the next one on that. So they can continue. Um, of course, you have the virtual component so that maybe you're like, hey, this is the best time that works for me. Maybe the one offered here doesn't work for people. There's other ones in other locations that they can, they can attend. The cost can range anywhere from 10 to $25, and that's for, that'll be for the curriculum. But we have uh, our regional director, Mel King, and he's at Teen Challenge Center down on Faith Home Teen Ranch and Series. He's like, hey, just tell me how many books you need for your first. I'll give them to you, boom, when you do your first class. So we have some good support, but it's pretty, pretty affordable. Each participant is given an action plan workbook, which helps them to identify where they are in the stage of change, identify triggers, assess friendships and family relationships, set goals, spiritual, educational, employment, relational, there's referral resources, build teams with mentors, counselors, support groups, and local church. Okay, next slide. Ready Now Recovery has incorporated courses within five different categories. And these five categories will provide education which will promote healthy lifestyles. So there's the spiritual growth, life skills, emotional intelligence, social development, addiction, education. Next slide. Okay. Resources, in-person groups education referrals. So someone might need help getting their GED, getting into college, going to a trade school. Even they might realize God's calling me to the ministry. There's in-person groups. So we, we let them know where the groups are. Virtual groups, and it's called the Sober Peer app. And then referrals, hotlines, pastoral counseling, professional counseling, residential treatment, and then local church connection. And so you know, it, you've heard the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a community to help people break free of life controlling issues. And just think about your own life. How many people poured into your life to get you to where you are at this point? How many different mentors, pastors, teachers, coworkers, friends, professionals uh, do you have in your own life? It's not that different, really, is it? Most of us have those and they've helped us to get to where we are. And so we're saying, hey, we want to help you. That's part of having a healthy life and breaking free. Next uh, slide, training. Administers, so it says team, administers the program in the community. A location can start with two trained facilitators, but over time we will help build your team. So we have three of us right now who've gone through the training. Myself, Rick Travers, and Ponce Rodriguez. And so, like we said, you got to have two uh, facilitators to have an in-person group. We wanted to have in-person, and that's for accountability and for just protection for yourself, for the group. So they're just saying, hey, with as little as two volunteers, you could, you could start a group. Outreach teams. These teams will be trained in evangelism and discipleship, having intentional focus on the 40% that are not ready. So this is going out into the highways and the byways and the hedges and compelling them to come in. And so we partner with ATC centers for outreach ministry. So that would be like the local teen challenge. Partnering with local churches, which we are one, but we partner with other local churches and then local nonprofits. And so there's a very robust and intentional training for all of our facilitators. A core element to our training is to equip each team to go into the community regularly, at least once a month for outreach. You know, and so we were getting kind of excited thinking about this because this is, this is a catalyst for us to 
get to know all these nonprofits. We may be familiar with some, some we may not be familiar, but this is, this educates ourselves to be able to help people more effectively instead of saying, oh man, like, yeah, I know your, your need exceeds my, what I can do. I hope you, you know, I'll say a prayer for you. I hope you're go your way. You're fed, (laughs) you know, your life gets back on track. But the difference is being engaged and knowing like, Hey, call so-and-so this is the address. They can hook you up. They can help you. So that's a good uh, thing that we're going to learn. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, facilitator course plan. Okay, and so this is part of the further training, or this is this is part of the training that we went through. Uh, the R and R group dynamics, so learning the dynamics of the group, going through the breaking free, which is the first one that we've we've gone through. Understanding and supporting healthy grief, confidentiality. We had to get trained about child abuse, neglect, prevention, reporting. And so we're, we're mandatory reporters in this group for elder abuse, for child abuse, for spousal abuse, whatever someone has committed a crime or they're saying they want to hurt somebody. We're mandatory reporters. Loving, learning about loving our community. Uh, there's a book, Disciples Are Made, Not Born. And then we had to do a seven week group participation. And then there's a subscription. So it's $100 annually or 10 month, you know, $10 monthly. And this is for all of our training to get trained and then ongoing education and the library resources uh, that are available. Okay, so, the, so let's go to the next one. And let's go to the next one. Okay, so on this one here, subscription includes, you know, you, you get you get certified, you get a card. There's a welcome packet with all the information. There's annual training. Uh, there's advanced training available for us. They have updated curriculum. And then as facil- facilitators, like someone off the street could buy this materials, but as facil- facilitators, they're at a discount. And this right now media, you've got uh, unlimited access to video based curriculums and something called Bridge. That's your training app that you do. And then they offer, uh, you know, you can go, you can go further. Next slide uh, into advanced training. If something like God calls you to this, this is your leaning. This is like, hey, this is what I would like to do one day. Mental health coach, first responder, becoming a grief and loss coach, learning addictions and recovery, leading small groups, basic and advanced, motivational interviewing. So there's a lot of ways that you can continue to to grow. Next slide. If you want to look this up, next one, you can go. So if you want anyone, any of you guys can check this out, readynow.org. Uh, Instagram at Ready Now Recovery, Facebook Ready Now Recovery. So if you want to write any of those down, okay, that's that's pretty much that presentation. Um, I want to say, and I, I hope you guys will bear with us. Looks like we're going to go a little bit longer, but we want to get this done so that you guys are aware. That if you have questions or you want to, you know, look it up further, you know where to go. You know what it's about. And so we went through, we went through this training. Uh, I won't touch too much. Hopefully, what Fonzie's going to speak and Rick, they'll tell you why we decided to do it, and so forth. But we decided we felt like God wanted us to start this and offer this to our community through this church. So we went through the training. As you know, we're all bivocational. We all work full time jobs. We have families. Then we have responsibilities at the church. And so we committed to going through the training, which Rick will tell you what it takes to get this certificate. We all committed to it. We completed it. But it's one thing to go through the training, and then it's a whole other thing to launch your group 
And we had set a goal to launch it in a couple weeks here. But there's a lot of things you have to have in place so that you do it well. You execute it. You don't fumble. There's legal aspects. There's about uh, launching this group right from scratch. We've gone through the training. Then it's another thing. Okay, well, in two weeks, we're going to start it. We've never done one. So I was talking to Rose Bird yesterday because I was filling out an online form. I thought I have some questions. And so Rose Bird is part of Anchored Bible Church at Scott Bird's church where he's the pastor. They're, they've been doing this program. And so uh, I was asking her, seven, which is the last one they do, September 5th. And it's about a six-week program, six to seven weeks. I need some help with facilitators, right? You got to have two to do an in-person. She's been doing it with Mel King, who's the director. He's working in other places too. So she said, why don't you, maybe you could help me. We'll do this one. And then after that, you guys could launch. At first, being the eager beaver, I was thinking, no, I want to, I want to get ours launched at our church. But as I talked to her, I thought, you know what? I think this is actually the hand of God moving us. We, we had prayed us three Lord, help us now that we're getting serious. We're going to give this presentation and we're going to get serious about launching a group. It's not going to be just, we've done the boat work. It's theoretical. We're talking about it. Now we're going to actually launch it and invite people. And so we're starting to get a little bit, you know, without talking to, we were thinking, oh man, we got to do this. We got to do that. And I thought about it. I thought, you know what? This is great because now we can do, we can do in the field training. We've done the book work. Now we can do the hands-on. And that gives us another like two months to go through this and get all those questions answered as we work. And that's what it's talking about, being part of a bigger network of, uh, in your community. We're serving their needs. She's saying, I need help. I need facilitators. We don't have to just jump in and start it here and, and maybe not execute it well. We could go there meet that need, learn about the program. And then she goes, then you can start your 107 and then we'll refer people to you that might want to start from the, from the beginning. And so I thought, man, that's a great idea. So then I called up Rick and he's like, I'm so glad you said that. That sounds like a great idea. I talked to Ponzi. And so I want you to know that we're not, number one, we're not winging it. Number two, we're not um, going to just try to grit our way through it and, you know, have... We don't want to have casualties along the way as we initiate. We don't want to have a shaky takeoff or a crash landing. We want to have a smooth transition. And so God has helped us uh, through this partnership to be able to do this. Ponzi, let me let me call you up. When Pastor first asked if I wanted to be part of this, we could do a modified of this team. I told him no. I I didn't want to be part of it. I thought to myself, I've never been addicted to to drugs or alcohol. How can I ever help someone like this? And then he asked, Have you ever been impacted by someone that had addiction? Uh, an addiction. And so that took me way back to my childhood. And so I have, I'm the youngest male of, of uh, eight siblings. And my older brother, my three oldest brothers, they're 14, 13, and 12 years older than I am. So every memory I have of them were, were bad memories. They, they were addicted to heroin. And that's every memory I have of my older brothers. They went to prison. I didn't grow up with them. They would come out and go back to prison. I, I, have, I have letters from my brothers from prison. Uh, and so when he said, have you ever been impacted? Those memories started to come back. Seven years old, my brother who I looked up to, he overdosed once, foaming in the mouth, in our home. We called the ambulance, they took him in, and he survived. He didn't learn his lesson. He went back to it. And that's every memory I have of them. My father was addicted to alcohol. He was abusive. Uh, So when he mentioned this, yes, I was impacted by it. And in 1988, two of my brothers were in prison. 
And another one of my, the third brother, was actually in an in-home recovery, trying to get off of this. And in 1988, Art, the brother I looked up to, came out of prison, and I was excited because now I was 13 years old. And I wanted to learn how to draw like he drew. I wanted to be like him. And he comes out of prison, and he introduced me to Jesus Christ. So the reason I'm here is because an ex-addict introduced me to Jesus. So yes, I wanted to be part of this now after all that. And so there was a change. Second brother comes out of prison. He came out a Christian. Third brother comes out of the recovery home, and he's now a Christian. All three brothers in 1988 gave their lives to Jesus Christ. It was a miracle in our family. They introduced us to Jesus Christ. And so why are we getting involved in this? The answer is easy. Because we want to be like Jesus. Pastor Jesse read Luke chapter 4. Our Lord Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to preach. I mean, he has sent me to proclaim that the captives be released, that the blind will see, and that the oppressed be set free. And so Jesus came to set the captives free. We want to be like Jesus. We want to offer them hope. And that's the reason why. So the answer is easy. Because we want to be like Jesus. Amen. Brother Rick. Pastor Jesse asked me to explain to you the process involved to become a facilitator for Ready Now Recovery. There's quite a bit of training, some Zoom classes to take to complete the process. You're allowed to work at your own pace, but they do ask that you complete everything in 45 days. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is that? They're not going to kick you out if you don't finish in 45 days, but they want people with a passion to go through the material, to go through it quickly, to learn what needs to be learned, and then to start their group as soon as possible. Right. So I finished in just under 60 days, to be honest, um, but that was because of the scheduling of some of the Zoom classes. So um, before I give you the details of what's involved in this process, I want to tell you about my personal journey to get where I am today. One day, Pastor Jesse shared with me about this new ministry he was told about that he wanted to start here at Oasis. And as he alluded to, he was told by um, Scott Bird, our DM for Southern Baptist Association, his mom, Rose, runs the ministry at their church, Anchored Bible Church in Modesto. Pastor said that you need two facilitators to start a group, and he had asked Ponzi if he wanted to do it, and Ponzi said yes. My journey was a little different. After my discussion with Pastor Jesse, I was at home praying for him and for Ponzi and this future ministry. Do you know what I mean when I say God spoke to me? This is a very difficult thing to explain, especially to non-believers, hmm. right? No, God didn't speak to me audibly, but those who followed Jesus for a while know what I mean when I say God spoke to my heart. God said to me, Rick, I want you to be a part of this ministry. This is going to be an important spoke in the wheel at Oasis Folk Church. So when I saw Pastor Jesse a few days later, I asked if I could be part of the Ready Now Recovery Ministry. And you know our pastor, he's never going to say no to anybody who wants to uh, do what Jesus says. <laughs> And so uh, he graciously invited me to join him in Ponzi. And I share that story because I'm hoping today, perhaps after you go home and think about what we talked about today, that God will speak to you. Maybe God wants somebody here uh -huh. in this congregation to step up and be in the next group. Because as pastor said, we don't want to do this forever, just the three of us. We have a lot of other ministry duties, but we want to launch it. We want to bring others up behind us that can continue with the ministry. So I encourage you to take that to prayer. Now, let's get into the details, how you become a facilitator at Ready Now Recovery. First, you need to show interest by registering. Huh. So you register, and when you register, they send you an email telling you all the material you're going to need to purchase, and they get you on what they call the Bridge app. Everything runs through the Bridge app. All of the training, all of the classes. And by the way, if you decide to get involved, the church will reimburse you for the expenses 
that you incur for this training. The material you get are six books that contains six lessons each, and they're the curriculum for 30 week, 36 weeks of study that you can go through as a facilitator. Then you get the facilitator's guide and answer key. Then there are two more books Pastor Jesse mentioned. One's called Loving Your Community, and the other one is called Disciples Are Made, Not Born. So you need to read through those books as well. Now you have all your materials. You're ready to begin your studies. And the studies are in two modules with 15 parts in each module. The lessons are anywhere from five minutes to three hours long. <laughs> Most of them are about 30 or 40 minutes, as I recall. Let me give you an idea. Jesse mentioned some of these, but what are the, what are the things covered? R&R's Introduction to Confidentiality. R&R's Best Practices, Third-Party Communication, R&R's Best Practices, Record Keeping, R&R's Best Practices, HIPAA and ATC Requirements, R&R uh, Confidentiality Review and Re Reflection, R&R Child Abuse and Neglect Mandated Reporting, R&R Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention, Introduction to Universal Precautions and Hand Rising, Germ Prevention, Disposal of General Sharp Objects, Bloodborne pathogens and other viruses, basic first aid and hands only CPR, personal protective equipment and proper lifting techniques, RR annual training electives, RR annual training electives checkpoints. There's some checkpoints where they want to make sure you complete it and maybe you need to get approval before you can move on. Introduction to Ready Now Recovery. What does an RR group look like? Who are RR facilitators? RR group dynamics, helping skills and techniques fundamentals and effectively running a group, managing and preventing conflicts and handling uh, disruptive behavior, launching your first R&R &R group, breaking free facilitator certification, understanding grief and addiction, supporting healthy grief, loving your community, reading quiz, intimacy with purpose facilitator certificate, disciples are made not born, reading quiz, and then the seven weeks of Zoom calls. Wow. So after two lessons, four check-in points, and seven weeks of Zoom calls, you're now a qualified facilitator. <laughs> okay? And it's pretty intensive, but you get tons of support. I've gotten so support from the, the home office. I've gotten support, obviously, from Jesse and Ponzi along the way. You're not alone. You're going to be supported. And so I would ask you to consider um, maybe looking at this as a possibility for a future ministry for you. Um, I praise God that he gave me a few days off during this and some days where I had big holes in my schedule that I was able to get through this because it, it, it does take a little bit of work. But now with this new plan that God kind of dropped at our doorstep with going to work with Rose Bird at their church to get before we launch our own group, I just think is an awesome way that, as Jesse said, hands-on training, right? And then we will be ready, right guys? Mm -hmm. We'll be ready to launch. And everything that's been shared, <laughs> I can add to, my, my parents were alcoholics um, I've known several people. I had an accountability partner that came out of addiction. And started. He was the one who started most of the Celebrate Recovery groups in the Central Valley before they became as popular as they did. And then they kind of took off, right? Um, I, I've been around people with the addictions, and I'm sure that just about every one of you have too. And so we all have a heart to want to help people, right? And, and that's, that's why we're doing this. And so I think it's really important for our group. Okay. Thank you, Rick. We were gonna do a mock group. I don't think we'll have time, but what I'm gonna do here in a moment is I'll, I'll ask, uh, I don't know if Rick has it or Ponce, just read the, well, the, the way a group looks is you open in prayer, you read the, every group you read the uh, ground rules for the group, and then there's the curriculum, uh, it has 
a really good, compelling story at the beginning. Then it has questions that lead you through. And always scripture, every single time is scripture. And they express the importance, get to the scripture. The word of God is what transforms us. And so you get to the scripture, you have discussion, and then at the end you always close in prayer during the groups. You encourage people, if they're not, to plug in and be part of a church group, have a pastor. And I want to, you know, sometimes we're sitting here thinking, we're racking our brains, how can we connect with our community? How can we make an impact? And so <coughs> nothing wrong with coming up with outreach events, inviting people here or doing something in the community. Obviously, that's a good thing. We're going to we're going to use all avenues and means that God gives us. But sometimes we're neglecting what's right under our nose, and that's meeting people in their point of crisis, their point of need. How many people do you think uh, could benefit from a program or a group or a group of individuals who are trained to do this and offering this? And by the way, we're. Offering this through Oasis of Hope Church, we're going to have it here at the church in person. But we are underneath Teen Challenge. They are the sponsor, you know, organization. With that being said, this is not an Oasis-only club. And so other people who are interested, who go through, become a facilitator or want to join with us, they're fully vetted. There's a background check. There's a whole policy code of conduct that you have very detailed that you have to fill out and sign and agree to if you want to become a facilitator. So if there was someone from the community, another, it's pretty much make sure you're a Christian. If you're going to do that, if you sign this, you're saying I'm a Christian and I adhere to this code of conduct. And so those would be the people from whatever, church or wherever they're from they're christian people who've gone through the same training so we're all on the same page so if you saw some other people here you wouldn't have to worry like oh who's this and that's why we can plug in say to rosebirds obviously we know them but if say at the center in turlock needed help one of us could go down there and plug in real quick uh, there's 38 groups that are currently going right now throughout the u.s in Canada. There's a few in Canada, mainly here. There's six in our area. That's the only place here in Central Valley of California and the foothills. There's places back east in the Midwest, you know, Arkansas, Missouri, different locations, but there's virtual groups. So just so that you can, it's still in the early few years of this Ready Now Recovery, but it's born out of Teen Challenge, which has been around since 1958 very reputable, well-known recovery program, but that's residential. And so we're offering uh, the local group, which is not residential, which makes it easier for people who would want to come and join us. And I was going to read you, I won't read it, but there's all kinds of other, like, like we had mentioned uh, intimacy and there's uh, groups on, th there's a whole thing, anger management, Finances. Finances. So there's all kinds of different groups that we can offer. Some of them we have to get certified to teach them. And some of them you just got to get the curriculum and you're good to go. So like the intimacy one, you got to go through another training. But once you do, we could offer that. Who has the, the ground rules? Rick, if you want to come up real quick and read, read the ground rules. So one of the things I've always loved about this group is unashamedly they say the way to recovery is through Jesus Christ. And you're going to see that right in these ground rules that we have to read at the beginning of every session. So it starts off with faith-based. Faith-based. Everything we do will be through the guidance of the Bible, the Word of God. We will in every group pray, read scripture, and encourage you to connect with a local church. Number two, sobriety. On this journey and in your steps to recovery, please make a commitment to sobriety. We ask that you do not attend groups while under the influence. If you're struggling with this, please reach out to the facilitator in advance and they can help you with resources to, for extended care and support. 
as Pastor Jesse mentioned, we're going to be reaching out because we can't do everything ourselves. Confidentiality. What is said in the group stays in the group unless it's determined that a person is in danger of hurting themselves or someone else. Nothing said in the group shall be discussed outside the group without the permission of those involved. If you are in an online group, make sure that you are in a room by yourself so that no one else can hear or see the other participants in the group. Comfort level. Please speak and share within your own comfort level. We value your input, but please do not feel pressure to speak or share. Respect. We do not advise, analyze, or fix others. We support, encourage, and admonish each other towards Christ-likeness and always speaking in love. No convincing. Share your opinions. A difference of opinion is welcome. However, please don't try to convince others to the way you are thinking. Focus on yourself. It's easy to talk about the issues of others, but for our purposes, we want you to put yourself on the table. Try to use I statements rather than them, the church, us, we, etc. Limit sharing. We are considerate that everybody in the group needs to share. We will be sensitive to limit our discussion to avoid dominating group discussion times. Regular attendance. We will make a commitment to our group to attend regularly, to be on time, and to end on time. Listen, when someone is talking, have the floor. They have the floor. Everyone else will actively listen. Be prepared. We will come ready to fully participate in our group. Silence. Please silence all electronic devices for the duration of the meeting. Conflict resolution. We will guard against offending one another. If someone offends us, we will work it out directly with them. Whenever relationships are involved, there will be conflict. We will handle the conflict biblically according to the guidelines of Matthew 18. And the last one, not a substitute. The group is in no way a substitute for medical or psychological care. We never advise anyone to stop taking medication or cancel their doctor's care. We never recommend alternative substances or medications. So I love the way they set this up because these rules are going to be read every week mm -hmm. before we start. So everybody knows what the ground rules are. Mm -hmm. So in our mock session, we were going to have Jesse start talking about his brother or something. And the, the Ponce and I were going to say, oh, no, 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 Jesse, that's a good answer. But what's it mean to you? Right. So that's one of the rules. Right. So we read these ahead of time. So if somebody goes against them, we can say, hey, remember the rules. We agree to the rules in the beginning. And that's why we do that. After the ground. After the ground rule. After the ground rules, we get into the material. This is what it looks like. This particular week in session is day six collateral damage. And the question is. How does addiction...